Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, it's all the Mazelon stories with maps, all the places, all the things. Buckle up, stay tuned, here we go. And I rented a place that was right down the street from the brewery for Pacifico. Okay, Pacifico Brewery. And, wow, I'm kind of amazed at the quality here. But this, like right here, I think this is the house that I stayed in. I rented that. Yeah, it was uh, this one right here. This place here had an amazing garden. So, I would do laundry right here is the laundry mat right here this is uh like right around in here very nice ladies so this woman hired another woman to work in the time that I was there and I literally, the woman she hired was ripping her off like from the start and she knew she was ripping her off she caught her she wasn't doing the paperwork right. And and this woman hit on me like you wouldn't believe. She even got, she had figured out like the days I would be there. And I mean, she was nice, but she was stealing from her boss. And she was like, in no way a woman that I would ever try to hook up with. You know, I'm friendly with everybody. You know, I'm a friendly person. But oh boy. I mean, like if I was to go after a female, like she was going after me, like they'd probably, she'd probably call the cops on me. Right. So yeah, that was interesting to get my laundry done. Like every, I think I was in there like once a week. Right. So now, um, here I am right here. Now this road right here is I walk this road constantly. Walk this road, walk this road all the way. And there's a giant hill right here. It goes up pretty high. That's really not showing it too much. I think this is like the top of this giant hill right here. Okay. So I'd walk this like every day and go to this place here which is this just super awesome market with just all different kinds of shops. There's shops just everywhere. Down this whole street, there's just massive shops, right? So now I'm walking down this street every day, and right about here, somewhere, oh, right here, there's an old woman that lives in this house right here, right? So I'm walking up the street, and this is a crazy hill right here, every day, almost from the start. She started uh, um, yelling, hola, hola, when I'd walk by. And it was like, uh, so it just became a thing, right? Where, you know, I'd walk by, and sometimes I'd just be, you know, daydreaming, and I'd forget, and I'd get halfway past and this would be both directions i'd walk this way hola i walk this way hola okay so one day i was like i'm gonna catch this on camera because she's so cool well i terrified that old woman with getting her on camera she was looking at me like, why are you filming me? And then there was the language barrier, which I had already practiced this uh, soy un YouTuber. I am a YouTuber. And so I was trying to tell her that. And she and literally the next two days, her door was shut. <laughs> Never had her door been shut. Not even once since I had walked by there. So I terrified this whole woman trying to get a shot and the shot was lame. Like the sun beams 
like this way. So I was shooting into the sun. So there was no light. So you couldn't really see anything. It was a junk shot anyway. And I deleted it, but poor lady. So eventually she started sitting back at her door and waving again, which was good. I was, uh, I felt a little bad about that for some days. As a matter of fact, I was trying, there's a lady that spoke English that lived right around here somewhere where I'd been walking by and I mean, people just say hi there. I mean, it's really a nice place. So I was hoping that I would bump into this English speaking woman right here. And then I, and because I think she was bilingual, I'm pretty sure. And just be like, can you please go tell this woman down here that, you know, um, <laughs> she has nothing to worry about. Okay. So this little journey right here, Right now, this, this place right here is this crazy, like apartment building with like a casino or like a, a video poker lounge underneath it. I call this ice alley because this place right here is the ice place and they have like trucks all the time, pull up right here and fill up with ice, right? So it's literally where you people get ice. But then right here, the crazy shit goes on, right? This is the wackiest shit. And I think maybe there's like street prostitution possibly somewhere here. I'm not exactly sure. I walked up this street. I walked up this street. So I didn't really, I did walk down the street like once or twice for some reason, but it wasn't a regular thing I would do. So when I walk up this street, I think there was some street prostitution and maybe some drug stuff going on. So one day I'm walking this way and there's a guy sitting on the corner and he starts yelling at me. And I have no idea what he's saying. It's all in Spanish. And he's holding his junk and he's coming at me, right? And I'm like, uh, dude, <laughs> you, you know, I don't know what you're saying, but I don't like the tone of your voice. I don't like the way you're holding your junk. And if you get close enough to me, I am not going to, you're going to have a bad day, bro. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm walking away the whole time. I've now started walking backwards, keeping my eye on this dude. He seems like he's high as a kite, right? Is, is what I'm getting from this whole situation. So, you know, nothing happened. But then the very next day, or maybe it was two days later, this place and this place here were raided by... The guys in the pickup, the military looking police people, right? So not even a day later, they were raiding this place. For what reason? I don't know. But it was a little, it was a little strange, right? So now I would walk this area right here. This is like where all the good food is pretty much like this area right here. Right. And it's, there's a lot of restaurants on this plaza here, but really the good food, there's only one good restaurant right here, this Gia Bistro, but there's all these restaurants here. Right. But then this area, I have a whole nother video you can check out on all the good food, maybe not all the good food, but a bunch of good food in this, in this area. And there's some in a couple other spots, but basically, so this was like, my walk to get dinner, right? And I think I would mainly hit this route. So I'd start up here at my, my, my casa and I'd walk down here and then all the way up to here and cut over. But sometimes I'd walk down here and then down here. Now, right here is a metal recycling place. It's absolutely Mad Max looking at times during the day. They have fires just burning randomly. People out with just cutting torches. I mean, it's, it's definitely a wild looking spot. 
So I had, I would actually, yeah, this was like another street I'd commonly walk up. Right. So I'd walk down here and then up here. Now they had, when I was there, I got insanely sick. So like first I got food poisoning, food poisoning from like a, this place, like a place like right here. I'm pretty sure crab. So my first couple days I was just walking around here, just everywhere, just walking, 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 walking and exhausted myself. So I was just completely worn out after like three days. Then I got food poisoning over here. Then I walked into a tree like over here somewhere, gave myself a mild concussion. Okay. So then I went out here for my birthday. I rented a whole different spot out here, I think, right? Somewhere out here. So I rented a place out here and I went for a walk on this beach all the way, not all the way down. Maybe I went all the way down. I don't remember, but I went, this was on my birthday, right? So I went for a real nice walk, came back to the room I had. Well, in that time, I didn't really notice at the time, but when I woke up the next day, I had stepped on something. I don't know if it was like a, a animal or a plant, but my foot had a sting in it that was, I had to sit down and basically just like let my foot, the infection come out, right? For a day. It only took a day though, right? So then... Now I've had like massive dental work and a failed root canal. Like they couldn't, because of my anatomy, they couldn't get it out. So I was probably more beat up than normal, right? So then right about here, they had a sewage problem, okay? And they bring in these big ass trucks, like vacuum trucks or something like that. But when they did that, at the same time, right over here, right here-ish, the damn street blew out with sewage. So now when I'm walking down here to do my laundry and I drop my laundry off, I walk by the sewage. I feel like I get slapped in the face by sewage smell. Well, <laughs> a couple days later, I get a, in, or like maybe a day later, maybe the night, next, next night or something like that. I feel some weird thing in my sinuses, right? In my sinus, more specifically, just one side of my sinus has this feeling in it, right? At the time, I didn't really know what the issue was. I went to the dentist. She gave me some antibiotics. It started to get better. It started to get better and then it got worse. So then I had to go to a doctor and I got different antibiotics and that took days to get better and postponed dental work. And I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. Right. So that's just the injury list from the time I was there. So I was beat up from food poisoning and infection. I did antibiotics, three different antibiotics. Like I, it's been like five years or something since I did antibiotics. Yeah. Needless to say it was, um, pretty sketchy there for a minute. So now I'm staying over here and the dentist was right over here somewhere. So I walked to the dentist and it would just be like, Across here, over here, up here. Oh, not even that far. It's like right around here someplace, the dentist. So one day after, I think like the biggest day of dental work I had, and it was like three or some canals. And then like, I don't even know how many teeth ground 
down to get ready for the caps, right? Just a ton of work. And I think I had a double dose of uh, Novocaine. So my face was dead. I was starving by the time I could barely use my face, right? So I basically got, had a bunch of dental work over there, came back here, took a cab, sat around doing whatever for some hours. And typically I eat dinner at like two or three o'clock. That's when I eat dinner, right? And now it's like six or something like this, right? Okay, I'm feeling good enough where I can go get some food, right? So I'm headed to this area. So I walk down here, across here. Now I'm walking right, oh, here. I'm walking up this street because there's a convenience store right here and a super popular local restaurant right here. This place was crazy. People just out in the streets, the sewage is just leaking and they're just eating right there, like loving it. Super busy all the time. So I'm walking up this street. Maybe I'm like here or here, somewhere here, right? And this guy that looks kind of gang kind of guy has a kind of look to him. He looks at me and he kind of does this huh, kind of thing, like, and picks up his phone and starts. And I didn't really think anything of it at the time. Right. I just, huh, whatever. So then I'm walking up this street and I'm somewhere here. I don't remember exactly where somewhere up here. And there's this woman on a uh, moped little scooter thing. And she's like, just parked on the side of the street. I walk by. She says something. I say hi or hola or whatever back and just keep walking. And then she like goes and uh, starts a scooter and pulls up in front of me again. Right. And says, hey, you know what you're doing on this? I'm like. I'm, and I'm like dying hungry at this point. So I'm like, I'm going to get some dinner. Would you like to join me? Right? So now I'm on the back of this woman's scooter and we go up here to uh, this restaurant here. I don't remember exactly where it is, but we have dinner. And so, and now uh, we have dinner and then we go, over to the Mikado for shopping and I get her a new outfit. And while we're at dinner, she shows me the most horrifying picture and, and has a horrifying story. Like, uh, her, her place she was living in, like blew up or caught fire or something. Right. And it, and like her whole head was swollen in the picture and she had like crazy scars I was amazed at how good she looked that you couldn't tell by looking at her, just looking at her. Right. But this was a, a you know, a woman that had just gone through a extreme nightmare. Right. So I was like, shit, you know, take her shopping, whatever. Right. Hang out with her and shit. Well, <laughs> Later on, I kind of realized that that guy that I walked by right before I saw, uh, met her was like her something, right? And he put her on to me like I'm pretty sure they were trying to rob me. So I bought her all these clothes and we hung out. And I was drinking. I had like, I don't know how many ciders I had. I had a blast, to be honest. I mean, it was fun hanging out with her for a night. But then it was like in the mornings, she was like showing up, beating on the door. First thing in the morning, like I'm still trying to sleep. She comes over. Now there's a language barrier, obviously. And using this Google translator, trying to communicate. And... 
like, I know it's not very perfect because like the crazy things I'm reading, like she could, you know, number one, did the app record her voice like perfectly, like in the first place or, or exactly the words she was saying, did it get that right? Cause she's just speaking like fast into the phone, right? telling huge long stories so who knows if we can keep up and then the actual translation itself like i found some translations like there is no spanish word for cranberry right so they call cranberries blueberries they have the same word i mean so that kind of thing but i mean like crazy things like something about eating babies or something like that which i know she she didn't say anything like that but that's what i was reading right so who knows how bad the communication was, you know? And that was like such a hard thing to do, communicating with the app, right? With the app, like super not easy. So, but I started to get the, uh, the hunch that I was, you know, kind of being looked at to get robbed, right? Like my door in the middle of uh, like in the people like show up. I'm pretty sure the problem with this place I was staying, it was kind of like, it was a house, but it was kind of like an apartment. I mean, I literally could hear, I couldn't hear people talking inside of their houses, but if they were on their porches talking, you could hear people talking inside the house. If they are outside talking and you could hear them, like one of the first nights I was there, like one of the neighbors is like super early in the morning, just slamming a door. I think it was like a, a husband and wife, like having like a breakup and like he left and was like slamming the door and stuff. And I could hear like, I couldn't hear any yelling or anything, but I could just hear a lot of slamming. Right. So in the middle of the night, a few times, I could have swore there was somebody beating on the door to the place. Now, I just didn't answer the door, you know? I mean, if they actually break in like that, I mean, that's going to take some serious effort and the neighbors are going to call the cops. So, yeah, I just didn't even go downstairs. And this happened on more than one occasion. I was pretty sure somebody was beating on the door trying to get me to come let him in, right? Which was, you know, quite possibly uh, a robbery attempt, right? So at that point, I just, you know, I mean, and she just texted me and texted me and texted me. I took her out to dinner like twice. I took her shopping. I just gave her her rent money, which was like 3,000 pesos, you know, which is, I don't know, a hundred and... 80 bucks or something like that. So, you know, not a lot of money, you know, I mean, she had pictures, she had pictures to line up with her horrifying story. So yeah, that's, uh, that's probably about the scariest story. And it wasn't really like scary, you know, like I never, I, I probably got woken up with the door beating, but I'm not even a hundred percent sure it was, you know, it could have been the neighbors slamming their damn door. I never really considered this trip a vacation and getting ready to go on this trip was so freaking stressful. It wasn't even funny. I had to do all kinds of stuff to make sure my stuff at home didn't get messed up. I had to put like batteries, my tool batteries in the Hawk shop just so they wouldn't freeze. Um, and, uh, just, you know, getting all prepared to go. And it was, you know, just going to get my dental work done, you know, now it was a vacation from my life, but it, I consider it more a trip, right? I just went on a trip. It was a nice trip and it lasted longer than I've ever been on a trip before. i made myself do a lot of work while I was there. And, um, I actually have a, a pretty damn good business model for, uh, Mazatlan that 
if I ever need to go there for whatever reason again to live, I think I could probably do pretty well there. So thanks for watching the video to the end. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, like the video. Thanks and have a great day. Peace.